Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski uh, from Calgary, Canada. I'm in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, taking a look at some of the uh, collector car auctions. I was at uh, Russo and Steel, and now uh, an auction here behind me. I want to go somewhere. Um, and uh, and now I am at RM. So these auctions are, are quite different. Um, we're at the Arizona Biltmore uh, instead of a tent, and this is uh, quite a bit fancier. I mean, the average the average price of a car in uh, Russo and Steel might be thirty thousand, and in RM, I mean, maybe this year's down a little bit, but it's usually four or five hundred thousand. Some of those auctions, even you know, the cars average almost a million dollars a car. So with Russo and Steel, um, you know, they'll take anything. Um, they have crappy cars there. They have some nice cars there. It doesn't really matter. It's just about just about numbers. There's no vetting of any any real sort. Uh, they'll just take whatever car somebody wants to give them and it sells itself. Um, RM's different. You know, they have only a certain amount of places, and it's tough to get your car into RM or Gooding. I've only ever been able to get one car in an RM auction. That was in Monterey for my like best in the world Land Rover that I did ten years ago or something. Anything else I've ever tried, if it's a nice, even if it's a nice car, if it's not like a really collectible car, they just don't want it. They call a cheap car anything under two hundred. Um, and uh, even though I've offered them some really nice cars, they just they just said no. We don't we wouldn't have too many spaces for cheap cars. And uh, so it's, uh, you know, this is like the best of the best RM and Gooding or, and Bonhams as well, but RM and Gooding are the two big 900 pound gorillas in the classic car market. And uh, uh, David Gooding's got a little bit more of a laid back style. RM's more of a much bigger machine, you know, a lot more people that merged with Sotheby's, um, but both, both have first quality um, consignments. So I can't really pick apart these cars um, because they're all good and to go through them to go through them and really judge what they should sell for would entail um, an in-depth look at the you know uh, uh, restorations of the car photographic evidence documentation etc and I'm just it's not available um, so I won't try to do that there's auction estimates which are which are always usually high probably only 10 or 15 percent of the cars will reach their the high auction estimate most of them will sell uh, at or below uh, but I'll go through some cars and and maybe what I'll do is I'll just do a video of my two cents worth of each of each kind of car and, and what I think of them and uh, and then uh, just as an exercise I think it'll be kind of fun so let's just go through this big line of cars sitting out in Arizona and I'll flip this camera around okay so I probably won't get too close but what we have is an early Healy uh, this is a 104 um, if it were a uh, 100 M it would have the uh, leather bonnet strap and different carburations and different carburetors etc so this is a, 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 a looks like a lovely 100 M has this folding windscreen um, I've had one of these and they're just terrific cars um, when you uh, look at a Healy Basically, what you want to do is you want to look at these panel gaps um, because the doors are really hard to uh, fit properly and you have to, when you're restoring them, you have to deal with the inner and outer sills and, uh, and uh, then align the doors. And what happens is you take the whole thing apart and um, take the engine out, etc., restore the body shell um, and get, get all your gaps right and then and then you go and you stick your 600 pound engine in it and the chassis flexes and now your doors don't close anymore. And by that time you painted the shell and you give up and the doors don't align. This car, they're aligned. It's a nice car. Um, it would have come standard with painted wires and it's got uh, chrome wires, but it's about everybody does that. And then the other thing with the Healy is that the, um, the center shroud is um, aluminum and then the outer fenders are steel. And then where the um, aluminum uh, aluminum meets the steel, it can give rise to electrolytic corrosion, which is very expensive to replace. Um, so uh, you want to look out for that. Have any evidence of bubbling in that center line? And then and then these cars weren't expensive for. Geez, I remember I remember my dad had one that he just they were there's they're just cheap used cars. Had all manner of bodges. So. Because of that, there's all manner of restorations, and it's hard to tell 
uh, just looking at the car. Uh, so here we have an E-Type. Um, this is a uh, Series 2. It's unusual to see the Series 2s at these auctions because the Series 1 and the Series 3 are worth more. As they got older, the, the lights were exposed and the air aperture grew and they could have became a little bit heavier and less sporting. So it, it's not usual to find like Concours restorations on Series 2 uh, <clears throat> Jags. Which means they could be, you know, they could be good value because this one, the estimate's seventy to hundred, but uh, um, you know, you're not going to restore one for seventy to hundred. You know, this this will cost you one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars to restore. So anytime I think that you're, if you want that car, and you are buying it for less than the replacement cost or less than the re restoration cost, I think that you're doing okay. Hello, Joe. Uh, we've got a Maserati Mistral. Um, so this is the uh, two-door sedan Maserati in the 60s. It was famous for their you know, grand touring cars, uh, uh, um, more than their sports cars. And uh, very comfortable. The, the, these cars also haven't been worth that much. This one's beautifully restored. I mean, they were $40,000 cars for a long time. And uh, lately, of course, with the increase in collector car values, um, you know, they've become, you know, at least they can get in the hundreds somewhere. Um, again, it looks like a beautifully restored example. And, uh, you know, 150 grand or something is what I'm expecting. So it's 125 to 175, okay? So a beautiful car, uh, V8 engine. Um, this is a Healy that is the last version of the Healy. That's the first, that's, that's, the, that's the 104. Then they went to 106 with a six cylinder engine. Um, and uh, they ended up with something like this, which is the 3000. They had a 3000 Mark I, Mark II, Mark III. And this is a uh, BJ8. Uh, the same thing, uh, and, and these ones had more comfortable interior. You can see that it's stretched. There's uh, little back seats in it. Uh, and you can see the door gaps on this also look uh, pretty good. And you still have to worry about all the same things with um, electrolytic corrosion and door fit, etc. Again, it looks like a beautifully restored car. Uh, Ferrari 612 Scalietti, uh, just to use car. Um, it would have been, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars, and now they're big two plus two Ferraris don't hold their value too well. Um, even, even the nicest one out there is probably not even worth a hundred grand. And uh, we've got an estimate of 100 to 125. Great used car value. Certainly a comfortable car. Uh, okay, so Broncos, resto modded, lifted. Uh, there's lots of people who want cars like this and old Land Rovers and so on. Um, you know, you're looking at the integrity of the of the steel and so forth and the chassis. Um, it still costs 100 grand to restore these things, no matter what it is. And uh, like I said, this one's 70 to 80, 70 to 90, I think. And that's about what it would cost to uh, to uh, to restore one. Um, the flat nose uh, 930. And so let's see what the year is. It's 87, so that's still a four speed. Uh, 89 gave you the five speed. Um, the option code on that's 505 for the flat nose. I don't know how many they would have made of these, uh, you know, maybe a couple thousand or something like that, but it's about, you know, it's probably still 50% uh, increase in value over the coupe version. If it was a coupe, I don't know the history or whatever, but if it was a coupe, it might be 70, 80,000. So I'm expecting 120 or something for this. And we've, we've got a little bit more optimistic here. One, 150 to 200. It says one of just 42 made for 87. Okay, but they made, they made them in more years than that. Um, and it's 32,000 miles. Okay, so they, they want a little bit more money for this car. Looks nice. Um, you know, looks like a nice example. One that gets, you know, the, the, the market places a pretty big premium on the, on the five-speed 1989. Fassel Vega. Um, fantastic French car. American engine. Uh, combining, um, combining European style with American uh, performance and torque. Uh, these these cars were very expensive. They were uh, celebrities own them. I think it's a, you know, like Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack, and you know, and it's it's famous for you know having this like an aircraft like uh, instrument, um, uh, uh, fascia, and then it's it's made to look like wood, but it's actually hand painted, which is neat. These cost fortune to restore, absolute fortune, and uh, 
they're not they're not worth that much compared to the Italian Exotica um, and you consider them not these hybrids these Italian American or French French uh, French uh, American uh, hybrids uh, with European uh, bodies and American engines Monteverdi Di Tommaso um, would be examples so really great cars are you know I'm not sure one sold from maybe 300 maybe a little bit more than that and you'll spend that restoring it so again it's a car that if you love if you love these this era and I do it's a wonderful car where uh, where the restoration is going to be several hundred thousand dollars buying it any for anything less is a deal so let's see we've got this from 225 to 275 uh, and again that's that's about what it would cost to buy a car and restore it uh, Ferrari 575 or 550. 575M, the M is this modificate, mod modified. Um, you know, just a used car, they made lots of them. Uh, 575M, they had the paddle, this one is the paddle shifters. There's a big premium for the manual. Uh, and uh, you know, it's like whatever, 125 grand or something. Uh, 100 to 120 for this, okay. Oh, interesting Mercedes. Um, it doesn't have a badge on the back, but that's an M100 engine, which makes this a 300 SEL 6.3. There's no badge on the back, which is kind of funny. Um, and this was uh, this was the big engine from the 600 drop in the midsize body. Then another video on a on a 6.3 um, uh, air suspension and uh, this glorious uh, engine, which also was in the 6.9 as well. So. Uh, fantastic cars not worth that much I mean you know I'm looking at this and it's you know fifty sixty thousand dollars I don't you know what do they want well they say 75 to 125 we'll see um, single family ownership original Southern California car spare 6.3 engine okay so it's got a few more things than normal but um, I've driven these cars and they are uh, Fantastic, fast. It's faster than a Corvette. Uh, Road and Track called it the uh, the finest four-door sedan in the world when it when they, when they tested it. They took it to the drag strip and it outdid uh, Corvette. Uh, Maserati Ghibli. Um, so this was Giorgio Gigaro's, uh, probably one of his finest works. It's got uh, you know probably the most famous, well, the most famous Maserati, laid-back Grand Touring car, old school in the sense that it didn't have. Uh, you know, independent suspension. Uh, it's got a live rear axle, four cam V8. They made a 4.7 and a 4.9, something called an SS. Uh, and they were, you know, a third, no, a quarter of the price of a Daytona, so contemporaries of the Daytona, uh, and uh, but not worth anything like as much. Again, this looks like a gorgeous example. I'd expect it to be in the $200,000 range. And let's see what they want for it. Uh, 275 to 375. Okay, so a lot. That one. Uh, what makes this one so special? Let's see here. It's an SS 4.9. Okay, so that's the top of the line. Matching numbers. Uh, meticulously restored by Mark Experts. Great period color. Maserati Classic A documentation. Known history from you. Okay, okay. So it's... it's not only a great great restoration but it's got the providence as well uh we got a 356 cab this looks like an earlier one and it's 1958 356a slr mercedes i sold these when they were new uh <laughs> the brake the carbon first one of the first instances of carbon brakes and uh they don't work that well when, when they're cold i remember having to back it out of a transporter like a double decker transporter and back it out and I couldn't feel the brake pedal, and I can't see out of it either. So I'm reversing this thing into the, the abyss and trying to, uh, with about one millimeter on each side of the rails, it was like a terrifying experience. Uh, but a neat car, um, a neat car. I think they hold their value pretty well. 246 uh, GT uh, Ferrari. And uh, these ones just went sailing up in value, four or $500,000. And they've come back down a bit. Super pretty car. Uh, when you look at these cars, everybody seems to want the chairs and flares, which are the Daytona seats, uh, which you see there, and the fender flares. 
and uh, this is one of 313 produced for 1974, but they made several thousand of these. Um, it went to Hurrah, Bill Hurrah uh, Classic Motors. And so he's uh, from Lake Tahoe and had owned the Imperial car collection. He had like a thousand cars, including like 15 Duesenbergs and it, all kinds of crazy Ferraris. Uh, and then we've got a uh, Mustang, which I don't know too much about. And it looks like, I guess the 350, isn't it? GT350 and others. Um, well, I don't, I don't know too much about Mustang, so I'm not gonna say anything. This is a Continental, not a Lincoln Continental, just a Continental. And uh, this was a very expensive car in period uh, with um, leather and trim and so on uh, that would have been, you know, the, the equal of the European exotics. Um, very expensive to restore these cars. They haven't been worth that much. They've been in the 30s and 40s forever. This one they probably want more for, 60 to 100. Um, but a great American car. And, uh, and uh, they didn't make many and they were all handmade. And uh, I, I like I like this car a lot. I think this is a, and it's a great color for this one. Ah, uh, a used Bentley. Nobody cares. Oh, it's a nice car, I'm sure. Um, you got to be careful with these though, because some of the earlier ones, they tried to save like five hundred dollars when they when they manufactured the car by uh, making all of the. Um, uh, uh, hydraulic lines for the top out of like plastic and they appear to have like you know a 20 year lifespan and then they crack and they leak and the top doesn't work and then there's like one guy in like all of North America like I could be exaggerating here but literally one guy who like will fix your top by making new hydraulic lines for the whole thing it's like $25,000 to fix it so you really want to make sure the top works if you buy a um if you buy an Arnage, it's not an Arnage, it's um, Azur, sorry, Azur. Okay, nice Hudson, don't know a thing about it. Um, Woodies are, uh, are uh, always popular, and what a great machine. This is an interesting car, it's a 300 SC, and it would have they would have made this car in a, a Roadster, a Coupe, and a cab. Actually, it says 300 S, but on the rear bumper on it, that's something that's unusual. And it says in spritz motor, which means injected motor, but only the 300 SCs, I thought, had the injected motor. And I thought the 300 SS were carbureted, so I don't know the answer to that. Um, I, I'm expecting a carbureted engine in this car, not the injected. So let's just see what we have here. And uh, we have the same engine from the 300 SL Gullwing. Not tilted over though. On the Gullwings it's tilted over for the, the space. And, uh, and you can see that it is in fact injected. So I don't know, oh I see here. It's, it is a 300 SC. And then, I'm not sure where I, where I saw it was a 300 S. I'm not sure what's going on there, um, but it's, it is a 300 SC. That means it's injected, and I've only made like 40 or 50 of these, or 30 of these, or some crazy number. Sorry. 98. So this car would cost an absolute fortune to restore, more than a Gullwing. And a Gullwing right now is about 400 US to restore, uh, and uh, and yet the values. I think I think I've seen them go for you know seven eight hundred thousand dollars, but I've also seen them go go for three four, which is a steal. And this one, wow, two seventy five to three twenty five. It's a hell of a buy, uh, considering everything that goes into this car. I love these cars. This is the this is the post war S class coupe, and it's uh, it's stunning. It should be worth far more than that. I, I think I think it's a buy. Okay, Sunbeam Tiger. Um, What's interesting about this car? Well, to change the rear plugs, you have to go through the interior. <laughs> that's, what, that's about what I remember about uh, about the Sunbeam Tiger. <laughs> uh, okay, late model Porsche. This is the endurance racing, so it's just cosmetics. It gets a GTS with some stripes on it, which doesn't really do anything. Uh, all right. Late model Ferrari, yeah. Alfa Julia. 
and 356. That's a later one. Let's go look at that one. Uh, 6600S Cabriolet, great colors. Um, not much I can add to this without seeing everything. Late model Ferrari. And a, that's a Shelby of some sort. Uh, what do they call this one? Series one prototype. <laughs> a Morgan Aero 8. This crazy car, crazy, like crazy headlights on this thing. BMW engine, aluminum chassis, so no more uh, wood frame on this car. It's got tons of style. And I think there's still, you know, 125 to 150. Well, it's just a great car, I think. Uh, you know, how can you not, how can you not love something so eccentric as this car? It's wonderful. Uh, all right, 914. Probably a six if it's here. No, just a two liter car. So that's unusual. What are they? 40 to 70? That's a lot for a 914. What makes this so special? Um, uh, rotisserie restoration. Got all the documentation. Yeah, well, that's twice as much as uh, normally one is worth. GT500, another Porsche. So that's an Aston DB2 four. I've had a I've had a 58 uh, DB Mark III, which is a version of this car with an enlarged engine and a different grill. I love these cars. They're a third as much as like the um, the Bond Astons, the DB5. So they want 180 to 220. Uh, it's 1955. So they made this car from early 50s. They raced this car at Le Mans, uh, and then the 58 was I think the last of the Mark III's. And I just think they have just tons of style. And they sit high and they're narrow and it looks a lot like a AC Asica, but it isn't. Uh, it has a 2.6 liter engine and then bored out to a three liter engine. And the engine did have some problems with blocks cracking and so on. So that, that engine in this car is a little bit fragile. And uh, you know, that's the one real question about these. But uh, I, I just, I, you know, I got halfway through the restoration of mine and just, it was just too much for me. And I uh, sold it. I really, really regret doing that. I, um, I'll never get another one, probably. Another 356. Ah, Ford V8. Lancia. Um, Lancia Delta Integrale. So this is the, uh, this is the version of the Group B rally car that yeah, had about really, super it, the, the group b rally car about seven or eight hundred horsepower supercharged and turbocharged and was really fierce and some henry titevin famous famously and tragically died in this car and that was the end of uh, group b and this is a road version 150 to 180. Uh, neat car maserati bora so this is uh this is uh shared with the murak uh, except that it's a V8 engine um, and it has some uh, Citroen componentry. I did an earlier video on uh, on the Citroen SM and this car shares some of the, of the hydraulic parts. Um, glorious car, stainless steel roof. Well, stainless roof? Silver roof, anyway. I thought they were stainless. I think it's a stainless steel roof. Um, you can see the seats are a lot like the um, Citroen Maserati. Great cars, and again, a fraction of the price of the Ferraris. You know, this would be 200 or something like that. 160 to 200, okay. Alpha Montreal. Um, another one of these kind of oddball classics that isn't really worth what the, you know, the, 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 the Ferraris and Lamborghinis are. It's a four cam V8, it's injected engine. Um, you know, misunderstood in North America, hard to service. This one looks like it's riding a little bit high, um, but a neat car. They were worth almost nothing forever, and now they can get up to about 75, 80 grand. Let's see what they want for this. 100 to 130. All right, so that's pretty, uh, pretty ambitious. Uh, 33,000 kilometers. Okay, a Corvette. I guess this is this is a Panos. Is that what this is? Panos Roadster. Um, GT40 replica. I don't know who made it. Uh, who knows? Doesn't say. 
uh, a vector. Well, this is pretty crazy. Um, I think they only made about 20 of these things. There's uh, Doug Dumero just did a video on one online, which is quite hilarious. This is a car that had all kinds of claims in period, but nobody had ever road tested the car. Uh, and uh, and they, the press were quite critical of it. And it had a crazy interior. And uh, this, this in fact might be the car that Doug DeMiro just did that video on. And uh, he went through some of the instrumentation and stuff. It's claim to fame was it had aircraft grade construction and instrumentation uh, in a road car. And it had like a crazy uh, performance claims uh, for it. Uh, a real oddity, but uh, but you know, an American, an American supercar in the day, it sure got a lot of press. Jeffrey Weigart was the guy behind that. Uh, all right, Corvette, Fiat Dino. So this uh, this car is shares the same engine as the uh, as the three as the uh, two forty six. So it's got that two point four liter quad cam V six engine in it, and in a, in a Fiat. And these were like ten thousand dollar cars forever. And uh, I guess now it's where do they want one hundred to one hundred and fifty? So I guess when 246 GT, GTs, they were 100 and then they became four. And these were 20 and now they're 100. I don't think I've seen one sell for over 100 grand though. Viper, DeLorean, a Lotus, built by Suzu when they had the car. Uh, some crazy Corvette, some crazy Quicksilver, uh, something called a Vagabond. I don't even know about it. And an X19. Don't see too many X19s at RM. This must be a pretty good one. It's an 86. Now it's called a Bertone, Bertoni, because they um, Fiat sold the Bertoni uh, and Pininfarina um, uh, names, uh, and they start and Bertoni and Pininfarina carried on the production of these cars. So it's a late one. Uh, 512BB. Uh, which is, of course, contemporary with the Countach. I don't have to talk too much about these. Only that they still seem pretty good value. These were, I remember having a 328 and, and 512s were 120 grand. Now they're doubled, 225 to 275. Still still great value. I, I still love the car. It's, it's, it's a real, a really lovely thing. This one's got aftermarket. So wheels on it, it's 930 turbo, another Countach, 550. But let's go look at this Spartan. It's a Spartanette. Now we saw the other Spartan in Russo and Steel. That's the Manor. This is a Spartanette. And I've, I've actually owned that trailer, uh, or version of it anyway. The Manors were meant as park vehicles, which would mean that they were, um, you'd take them to the trailer park the Spartanette, which is a different shape, uh, and it doesn't have that sort of uh, a reverse angle front, uh, were meant as camping trailers. And, and you'd refer to this as, as a canned ham, because it looks like a can of ham. And uh, another great example of a Spartan, everything else being equal, a manor is, uh, is, is worth more. Um, and this is one of the larger Spartanettes. I had a 24 foot and this one's longer. I don't know. This one looks like it's a 30, 30 or 34 foot one. They made the manners first and then they came out with the Spartanettes later. So this is a 53. <laughs> and, uh, I, uh, I love Spartan trailers. And just look at all of the birch wood. The, the manor, I guess, had mahogany. This, this looks like it's all, all birch. And they've done it up with uh, the period fixtures. And uh, we've got this tile floor. That's not correct. It should be the one piece uh, floor. That's the original heater, which I think is somewhat hazardous. Most of the times these are taken out. And we've got this great, uh, this great kitchen. Oh, it's wonderful. What a wonderful thing. I, uh, I gave up on mine um, just because it was just too much, too much work, too much. Well, I'd have been doing this for the rest of my life with three kids. Anyway, these are the, these are the, uh, I want to say Cadillac of um, travel trailers. Uh, Spartan was an aircraft manufacturer. They made one of the first um, 
executive uh, planes, and this would have been this would have been a, a plane that would have been about the same size and powered by the same engine as the World War II fighters, yet with a um, yet with a uh, you know a comfortable executive interior. And then after the war, that decreased demand for the, the planes, and they made these trailers, and these trailers were. Um, uh, thought to be homes for GIs uh, when they came back and were looking for a place to live, uh, and they were, uh, and uh, and also there was a great optimism for the mobility of the U.S. people. And uh, some pe futurists would write articles saying that a third of the population would be driving around, air traveling in trailers. All right, so let's see what we got over here. Jag XK120. Uh, beautiful. That's the exclusive version of the um, of the Turbo S Porsche. Uh, and a nice old Land Cruiser that's been redone. And these can they can get up to about 100 grand if they're done right. Um, and this one looks 60 to 80 for this. And another Citroen SM. Okay. So we saw one at Russo and Steel. And this one looks well. This one looks like it's had a little bit more work to it um, uh, but who knows you really want to know what you're doing with these cars and anyway I think they're just absolutely fabulous and great in these like 70s browns as well okay so that's my wrap-up of uh, the uh, RM Sotheby's auction in Arizona uh, for January 2020. There's some more cars down here as well, but they're mostly, well, it would just be too long. So uh, anyway, um, if I went through them all. So anyway, uh, thanks for viewing. Please like and subscribe. And, uh, you know, I, I wish I had more time to go through the cars individually. Um, but the, uh, the highlight for me, the highlight for me this year are these wonderful uh, Spartan trailers. I, uh, I just love it. So, anyway, thank you very much. Lawrence Romanowski uh, from Calgary, but in Scottsdale, Arizona, commenting on some of the cars here for the Collector Car Week.